Senior Service Bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Genesis 28 chapter verses 10 through 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of the Lord were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his dream and said, 
Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had uh, put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 11, 22, and 23, found in your bulletin. Let's read this responsibly by whole verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places, and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You rest upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I, I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the darkness of the heart of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me. And lead me in the way that is everlasting. The epistle today is Romans 8, 12 through 25. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longings for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own, but not own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been uh, groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. 
for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householders came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
time of year. His pattern of teaching using widely recognized illustrations like those from the growing and gathering of wheat would be lessons easily interpreted and shared among the people for whom wheat was an important staple in their diet. Jesus' listeners would have readily understood the illustration of the wheat being infiltrated by the seeds of the darnel plant, Titsania in the Greek, also translated as weeds or tares. There are seed, these are seeds that hide in plain sight because they so closely resemble the seeds of the wheat that it would be impossible to separate the two at the time of planting. When the seeds begin to sprout, the similarities continue. The stalks look so much alike that, and if they were planted together, the roots would have intertwined to such a degree that trying to weed out the tisania would have pulled up the weed with it. Food historians write that this is a mimic weed, one that looks and behaves so much like wheat that it cannot exist without human assistance. Not quite tame, but not quite wild. The plant's existence depends on being a stowaway, its seeds being harvested with those of domesticated grasses and stored away to be planted the next season. The plant leads a double life. It is a treacherous weed that bears a fungus in its seed that contains a potent psychotoxin. This makes it poisonous in large quantities, yet it, it was also sought after for those qualities too, as an additive to bread or fermented beverages for its intoxicating effect. Its biblical name, Lolium temulenum, originates from a Latin word meaning drunk. So these seeds were sometimes planted among the legitimate crop by the farmer, or sometimes by others who sought the seed's alternative uses. There is evidence of the seed in excavations dating back 20,000 years, and it is thought to have plagued farmers until the late Middle Ages. It is no coincidence that the alternate name for Darnell, or tear, came to mean that which is to be removed in weights of noxious weed of which Jesus speaks. Take note that the presence of the Darnell seed is wholly dependent upon human agency, and the results of the Darnell being mixed in with the wheat crop is literally crazy-making. The Atlas Obscura foodie website, Gastro Obscura, cites The Bread of Dreams, a book by an Italian scholar who argued that centuries later, European peasantry lived in a state of semi-permanent hallucination from adulterated bread or beer spiked with this grain, which they may have sought as an escape from the abject difficulty of their daily life. People certainly seem to know the effects of Darnell and how to use it. Who is responsible for the sowing of the good seed? We know from the creation story that when God made order from the chaos before creation, God separated the waters from the dry land. God spoke, and the dry land put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And God's act of speaking brought the word of God into the world, as the Gospel of John states, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if you are following me, God's word spread over the entire world like choice seeds truly a power and grace that preceded everything else that was made. God is the sower of this seed, the seed that gives life and light and breath to every living thing. The word, Jesus, was literally the utterance of God heard in every corner of the world, and like the sowing of seed, put forth the living presence of God in every field, plain, forest, desert,
desert and crevice between the rocks and completely covered the earth with good things. And so, as Jesus tells us in this morning's gospel, an enemy comes and sows the bad seed among the wheat and goes away. The landowner is wise and advises the workers in the field to allow the tares to grow to maturity next to the good wheat and then to gather the weeds to be burned at harvest time. Just who is this enemy? The word ekthroi in Greek is a plural, literally meaning enemies. Jesus is not more specific than that, but it's a long way from satanus, a word which Jesus uses to name the adversary. Enemies sowed the dangerous seed among the good, and when it is dried and harvested, it will be thrown into the fiery furnace to be burned. Poof, nothing more. The fiery furnace does not indicate eternal damnation. It tells us of the eradication of the Darnell plant as a pest and a danger to those who unwillingly might consume it. We can't impose conventional good guy, bad guy interpretations of this parable because it limits the possibilities of continual conversion reconciliation, maturing in faith, and compassion, given our root-bound interdependence. Rather, let the seeds represent all that is within the human character that stifles solidarity with all of life on this fragile planet. That's a pretty straightforward instruction, one that doesn't require us in our humanity to be the judge. If we look at ourselves as co-creators with God, those whose interdependence requires our care and cooperation in order to bring, out a, bring about a healthy and sustaining harvest, we leave the eradication of the weeds to God. In the oft-quoted words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., all I'm saying is simply this, that all life is interrelated, that somehow we're caught in an inescapable network of mutually tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. For some strange reason, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. You can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. Amen.
people form four are found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially our Bishop Sam and Jennifer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Linda, Sarah, Father Mark, Josh, Alan, Melanie, Emily, Robin, Paul, Chuck, and Dot. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, remembering this day Cornelia, Eugene, and Bennett, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most the merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors. Sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be right in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always be with you. And the also with you. study Wednesday at 1030 in the Guild Room. Bring your version of the Bible, whatever it may be. It's always lively and interesting. 
Um, I remind you next week, um, we're celebrating our graduates, um, Emily Becker, Seth Clark, and Herbert Johnson um, at the 1030 service. And after the service, having a diapers and wipes shower for Ashley Churchill, whose young one is, is due any day now. And um, if you'd rather not do the shopping or don't know what to shop for, you can put a check in the uh, offering plate with di diapers and wipes on it. <laughs> and you will know what to do with that. Um, and, and that would be much appreciated. Um, there's also a sign-up sheet on the back bulletin board in the, in the corner there um, for our back-to-school picnic on um, August 12th. Um, Joe, would you like to say more about that? Yes. It's, it's an opportunity for all of us to gather and have fun and also to support the children of the community. It's kind of a public relations event to let people know that we're here. And so we appreciate any school supplies that you can donate in the meantime, and we really hope that you'll come. I heard a young rumor we're going to have nachos that night, and it should be loads of fun. Also, a donkey booth. So I uh, would like to see uh, members of the best year or others be dumped. Um, you can you can buy a chance at that also. And there will be raffles for, for fun items as well. So please sign up to help with that and especially please come. In the meantime, we're collecting school supplies of all types, um, book bags, all school supplies. You you've been there, you know the drill, you know what kinds of things we need, crayons, markers, colored pencils, etc. So we look forward to um, having a great night together. It's 5 to 7 p.m. We try to schedule it once the heat of the day is over so it won't be so miserably hot. And please invite your friends and neighbors, um, especially those with school children. Excellent. It, it will be on a Saturday night, so 5 to 7 should be a good a good hour for all of us to get home and to, and to be in church on Sunday morning. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
service continues with the Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer and in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done. done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
by you entirely. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.